Good morning. Good gobbly goop. You know what good gobbly goop means? That's East Tennessee slang for I'm blown away. <laughs> good gobbly goop. That means it's good to see all y'all. Um, my name is, is Robert. Uh, my last name is Burlingham, and I'm always a little nervous when I look out and I, and I see more faces uh, that I don't know than I do know. But, but now, let me tell you, um, see, I wasn't raised in church. Um, I always wanted to go. I always want to be a part of the church. That's right, testify, brother. And <laughs> I always wanted to go to church. Later in life, I became what is known as a twofer. You know what? Anybody know what a twofer is? A twofer. That would be, I was one of those people. You could count on me being in church on Christmas and And here's what I discovered. I discovered that every time I walked into the church, those people, those people, those church people were speaking a language that I didn't know. Those people were singing songs, and I would try to sing the songs. I, I hate to tell you this, I was taught to read, and you know, the way I was taught to read, it was like a paragraph, and you started on the left, and you went to the right, and then you went to the left, and you went to the right, and you went to the left, and you went to the right, and I remember in church for years I was confused, because these church people, they don't know how to read, <laughs> because they go from left to right, and then they skip over a whole paragraph and go to the next paragraph. And that's the way they sang songs, and I didn't understand. And the church wonders why people don't come back. <laughs> what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that God speaks a different language. I'm trying to say that each of us speak a different language. But right there is the universal language. Right there is, come on, don't let mama correct you so bad. Wait, what's her name? Amora. 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 Oh, my goodness. Will you wave back at me again, Amora? Can you wave? Come on. Come on. <laughs> you see what happened? She's about to cry because she almost got in trouble. But now she's smiling. It's a universal language. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. If you don't get anything else out of today, know that God loves you where you are and as you are. Know that God loves you where you are and as you are. And that God knows a language that you and I know very little about. But we've been looking to be able to speak that language since the time we were born. And many of us Many of us in life come to a place and we are convinced that we don't deserve to learn how to speak the language or learn how to receive the language. And that that God loves you. Would you bow with me, please? Father, some of us know how to speak in the language of a doctor. Others know how to speak in the language of, of teachers and professors. Some of us know how to speak in the language of engineers. But all of us, Father, know how to speak a language, the language of life and of hurt and of pain. Father, we all want to know how to speak the language of hope. You have hardwired us for hope. We want to learn how to speak the language of love, and oftentimes we think we've got it. But then life happens. And we find that what we once thought was love is not love at all. So, Father, I give you thanks for everyone in this room. 
I give you thanks for whatever it is that we may know is sin, that on Good Friday Jesus took all of that upon himself. I give you thanks that he who knew no sin became sin. What a language, O oh God. What a language of love. I give you thanks for the parents in the rooms and for those parents who think their child are being fussy and they're not being fussy. They are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ into this space to teach us all how to make a joyful noise. A joyful noise that cries when we're broken. A joyful noise that laughs in the light when we're embraced by love. Come, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our hearts inspire and our minds transform and set our souls free that we at last may know that we are loved unconditionally, not to be ashamed another day, but to stand in the presence of your glory humbly. In the name of Christ, I invite your children into this holy place. Amen. Now, if you will, rise with me and turn to page 881. In church, this is the reason that I turn and I read. It's because I remember how confusing it was on Christmas and Easter to come and to not know the language and trying to fit in and to know God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, church. You see, this Apostles' Creed is a different language. It was a language that in the early days of the church that each person who wanted to come into relationship with God, they were taught across a period of a year. It took a whole year to understand what each of these phrases means. In other words, if you're a little confused about what they mean, you're in really good company this morning, but know that God desires to teach you, and I would be honored to walk beside you as you learn. I have a prayer that, and I have written this for this morning, um, and it really should all be in bold. I ask that we take our time and that we pray this together. Uh, notice that it is not a confession. It's a prayer of thanksgiving. For on this day of all days, we come to be a thankful people. Would you join me in an attitude of prayer? Would you join me with all of your heart and your mind and your soul? And as we pray this together, know that we're not to impress one another. We're only speaking to God. Father, your ways are not our ways. We prefer to see life as a straight street. Your creation suffers, surrenders to death, and rises to new life. We celebrate your way even now as the new life of spring rising out of winter suffering. Three times Jesus told us your way. The Son of Man must suffer, die, and on the third day rise again. Sin causes us to suffer shame, guilt, and blame. Shame, guilt, and blame kills relationships. 
It also hungers and thirsts for life, peace, and joy. Thank you for designing all of creation to reflect your way. Thank you for revealing your way through Jesus Christ. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us to walk in your way. We thank you for belief. Lead us now to deny what we know, to rise to faith in the one who forgiven, redeemed, and reconciled. We thank you for faith. Lead us now to rise in hope to face today's trials. We thank you for hope. Lead us now to rise in your way of love. In all things, lead us in your ways until you make us one with you eternally. And now let us pray together as we've been taught to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.